Okay. <laughs> I I have only uh, two uh, uh, older men. <laughs> uh, you have? Huh? Huh? You have had? You have? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Huh? Okay. Two older men. Yes, it's good. Uh, please, <laughs> please sit down. <laughs> and wear your hat. Wear hat. Wear hat. Tai Mao Zhu, we just won't know anything. When I was uh, still a monk, I uh, shaved head and winter very cold and I have headache. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, I mark it here <laughs> so I can continue. We should really thank the past masters, monks, and nuns, and scholars who have take time to record the Buddha's teaching after the Master's Nirvana. And also for the past and present persons, lay or monks or nuns who have really dedicated themselves, sacrificed their time and precious health or under any difficult situation to translate this so that I can read it to you. And we have to thank them. And may they be blessed forever by all the Buddhas, past, present, and future. May their merit be immense. May they be liberated forever. Thank you. According to Buddhism and the believer and the tradition, when you read sutra and all that, you have to put on incense, flower, you know, and bow to the sutra first and thank all the Buddhas and Bodhisattva in ten directions, all respectfully, before you read it, okay? And then you cover the sutra also with silk or, you know, beautiful cloth and I just make it more popular, yeah, more easy, simple. And I apologize to all the Buddha. I say, if I've done something wrong, according to the tradition. My heart is full of respect. It's just that I cannot always do that. So please, all the sin, whatever I've done wrong, is all on me. At least other people, they hear the names of the Buddha, according to the Sutta, they will get benefit. Yes. Yesterday we were talking about this uh, a good person when he attained some state of samadhi and if he thinks he's a sage, then the demon of chronic depression will enter his mind, yeah? And he might take up knives and swords and cut his own body. Terrible. Or he may flee into the wildness driven by constant anxiety and be unwilling to see people. And lacking proper samadhi, he will certainly fall. Today we continue. Further, Ananda, in this state of samadhi, the good person sees the disintegration of the form skanda and understands the feeling of skanda. As he dwells in this purity, his mind is tranquil and at ease. Suddenly a feeling of boundless joy wells up in him, and there is such bliss in his mind that he cannot contain it. This is called experiencing lightness and ease, but lacking the wisdom to control it. If he understands, then there is no error. This experience does not indicate sagehood. But if he considers himself a sage, then a demon that likes happiness will enter his mind. As soon as he sees someone, he will laugh, he will sing and dance in the streets. It happened, huh? Yeah. He will say that he has already attained 
unobstructed liberation, lacking proper samadhi, he will certainly fall. Samadhi is a state of, you know, um, deep meditation, but it can also mean that you stable, you very stable in spiritual practice. So if you don't have enough stability when you do meditation, you might have trouble controlling your whatever state of mind that you're in, like too much sadness, too much uh, happiness, too much craziness, too much uh, confidence, etc., etc. He already gone so high and feeling blissful. You would think he is a sage already. No, not yet. And even demon can come in his mind. How kapha? It's very scary. There was a demon of happiness. So be careful. Yeah, I heard about some people like that. They dance on the street and they hug people. And of course, people think they're crazy. And then put off many people to go and learn meditation because of that. Yeah? Mm. That they could possess, you know, possess state. But he's, he's not harming anyone. It's just that he doesn't behave as if he is a, a normal saint. Further, in this state of samadhi, yeah, he could be in there and then, but he can go further if he doesn't think that he attained everything yet. And then, if he continues with this state, then he can go. The good person sees the, this integration of the form skanda and understands the feeling of skanda. He says he is already satisfied. <laughs> Suddenly, a feeling of unreasonable, intense, Self-satisfaction may arise in him. It may include pride, a righteous pride, maybe arrogant, huh? Haughty pride, overwinning pride. <laughs> Buddha has so many vocabulary, and pride based on inferiority. My God, all of which occur at once. In his mind, he even looks down on the tathagatas of the Ten Directions. He even don't respect any Buddhas. How much the more so on the lesser positions of sound hearers and those enlightened by conditions. Sound hearers. Buddha say all the time, sound hearer. Eh? Guan Yin. Eh? This is called viewing oneself as supreme, but lacking the wisdom to save oneself. My God, you can't even save yourself in that stage. If he understands, then there is no error. This experience does not indicate sagehood. But if he considers himself a sage, then a demon of intense arrogance will enter his mind. He will not bow to stupas or in temples. He will destroy sutras and images so extreme, become fanatic, eh? extremely arrogant. He will say to the Dhanapatis, these are gold, bronze, clay or wood. The sutras are just leaves or cloth. I mean, he is very arrogant, eh? disrespecting Buddha's stupa, statues, sutras, and all kind of holy things. The flesh body, he is talking now. He is talking to some anything that is not important. He even say these are gold, bronze, clay, or wood. The sutras are just leaves or cloth. What he means is the statues or the stupas, I mean the small uh, memorial they make for the Buddhas or the saints. He say these are just gold and or, uh, bronze or wood or clay only. There's nothing in it, no meaning anything. Yes, The sutra are just leaves or cloth even. The flesh body is what is real and eternal, but you don't revere it. Instead, you venerate clay and wood 
That is totally absurd. That's what he said. Absurd. He finished talking. The practitioner opinions are like that. And now, the Buddha continued commanding: those who have deep faith in him will follow him to destroy the images or bury them. He will mislead living beings so that they fall into the relentless hells. Lacking proper samadhi, he will certainly fall further in this state of samadhi. If he continue in this state of mind, then the good person sees the disintegration of the form of skanda and understands the feeling skanda. In his refined understanding, he awakens completely to subtle principles. Everything is in accord with his wishes. Uh, he may suddenly experience limitless lightness and ease in his mind. He may say that he has become a sage and attained great self-mastery. It's possible that we can fall into this kind of trap because these are so powerful and so extremely wonderful. Yeah, this, this kind of state of mind, so blissful, happy, carefree, and, and wise also, somewhat. So we think we already somebody, already Buddha, yeah. This is a problem when, if we don't have a master to guide you or scold you into your right mind, <laughs> subduing your ego by some, some mean, then you become like that. Might not be to the extreme as to destroy the sutras or the Buddha's images, but could be, you know, very self-aggrandizement kind of a status. In Tibetan Buddhism, sometimes the normal lama or anyone from outside coming to the into the monastery, feeling that he is such and such a, a tuku, a rinpoche, a master from a rinpoche, a teacher of this present Rinpoche, uh, this present Abbot, uh, they make a lot of scene and noise. Yes. And then one of the person who wrote this kind of story, she said that if such a practitioner are not lucky enough to be near a good friend like other lamas or his teacher who will subdue his ego by scolding him in front of everybody, degrading him, make him <laughs> become <laughs> zero to the ego again, then he will continue to become misled like that until he gone insane. Then he will be very sad, he cry, he laugh, because nobody think, nobody believe that he's a, he's a tuku, you know what I mean, the living Buddha. Uh, nobody believe him that he is a former teacher of this present Rinpoche, and he expect this Rinpoche in the temple to bow to him, recognize him, uh, be grateful to him, and respect him, and worship him, all that kind of thing. Some people fall into that state also. And it's some true story like that in some Buddhist monastery. Yes. Then sometimes the master would ignore him or try to do something to cure him immediately, uh, as soon as possible. But if you meditate alone, you don't have any good friend like that, you know, to check you out, to straighten you up, then you'll be in trouble. That's why meditating is also very uh, important, that you must have a guide, yes, a good guide, who are not afraid to offend you. Hmm? That would be better to, for your safety yeah, and your spiritual progress. It might hurt the ego, but what is ego anyway? It doesn't matter, he won't die. <laughs> if you hurt the ego, it doesn't hurt anything. It just makes you better only, right? <laughs> it's better than uh, continue to be insane or lose your spiritual merit or lose your wisdom, lose your uh, future uh, spiritual attainment or progress. Right? Because the Buddha mentioned before, those and those kind of person even cut off the seat of future enlightenment even, cut off his body seat. It's very scary, yeah? That's why formerly 
not many master would take up a lot of disciples. Yeah. Even Bodhidharma, he didn't want to talk to no one a lot. He knows he's all deaf anyway, <laughs> just attaching to rope or uh, whatever rules and regulation, and not really understand the meaning of meditation. So he just went to a cave and meditated for nine years. And finally, some disciple, truly a handful of them, four or five of them, came and seek him out, and he really teach them. But even among the five of them, only one really understood the essence of it. The other four, he say, oh, you are just like, you, you get my skin, <laughs> meaning outside of me, uh, you get my hair or whatever. He meant just not yet inside, just outward only, outside only. Only one, Huika, he is the one who attained what the Master tried to teach him. And then after that, Bodhidharma left, go back to, to India. They said he's sick and died, so they bury him. But when they open the coffin, there's nobody there, only one shoe. <laughs> one shoe left. And the other one outside somewhere saw, saw him with one shoe on his uh, staff. <laughs> the one shoe in the coffin and one shoe he take with him. <laughs> Just to let people know that he's still alive or resurrected, that's all. Same with Kabir. Huh? The Muslim and the Hindu, they fight with each other who should take his body, because um, he's the master of whom, you know, he has both Hindu uh, follower as well as Muslim follower. So both of them fighting, wanting to take his body. And when they open the coffin, there's only two roses in it. <laughs> one for Muslim, maybe one for Hindu. <laughs> he's gone. <laughs> he's not there anymore. <laughs> yeah, some master can take their body with them, resurrect it, with the body or without the body. Yeah. It is said that Jesus resurrected, yeah? And then later he went to Kashmir, continue his practice with some small circle of disciples. I visited his uh, so-called tomb. Yeah. You had to pay, no? <laughs> I had to pay some money to, <laughs> to go inside. <laughs> yeah, they come and tell you outright, money! Box, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course they need it maybe just to take care of the tomb, you know, some caretaker, and they need to leave of it, no? I have to pay. I don't have that much money, but she told me to pay, so I paid. <laughs> I go inside, have a look. And nothing much, just the tomb and the name. No tomb even, you don't see. It's just supposed to be there. Suppose he lived until 120 years old yeah, in Kashmir. So maybe he resurrected and taken his body with him as well, like a beer or Bodhidharma. Huh? All right. Good translation? Yeah, wonderful. Oh, I'm so happy. At least the Chinese, you know, very difficult for them to come here. You know, not all of them have a lot of money. China is big, you know, not every Chinese city near Taiwan. Sometimes they have to go maybe with ox cart or something and get the bus and get the train and then get the airplane. It's very difficult. Some take two, three, four, five days to get to Taiwan from their own home. All right, that's another one. Okay, here, here it is. You see sound here. Even the person who meditates in this kind, maybe another kind of meditation, when he reaches this state of self-satisfaction, intense self-satisfaction, not just normal, then he becomes so happy, you know, so arrogant. He even looked down upon those Guan Yin practitioners, the sound hearers, and those ahas that have been enlightened by conditions, or meaning those beings who are enlightened by themselves, by some certain conditions, just like other disciples of the Buddha, enlightened by touch or by the sound of the Buddha, uh, hearing the voice of the Buddha, or by uh, the fragrance of something, yeah? For example, like that. Just because they have probably been practicing many lifetimes already, so right now just some simple condition, they get enlightened. Huh? And then uh, uh, also there are some called Patekya Buddha, meaning the, the one who meditate all by themselves, yeah? And then by some 
uh, married from the past life or maybe seen one master by chance and then became enlightened also. So these people are not necessarily disciples of Buddha, yeah? Okay. So, but the person who reached this state of extreme self, a satisfaction, he thinks he's above everything. But this is just one state, which is called viewing oneself as supreme, but lacking wisdom to save oneself even. You can't even save yourself, <laughs> not to talk about go out and save other souls. This is terrible, no? then you fall in. If he knows it, then it's okay. But if he doesn't know, then he will fall. The demons and all that will come. You see this kind of so-called enlightened person? He can't even save himself, but he has follower. <laughs> the Buddha say those who have deep faith in him will follow him to, to destroy the images or bury them, you know, destroy the Buddha statues and all that. He will mislead living beings so that they fall into the relentless hell. Bad one. Like in proper Samadhi, he fall. He fall, okay, one person might be okay, but because he's misleading others as well, that is a problem. So to choose a master is also a very difficult task, not to talk about uh, uh, being enlightened or become a master one's way. Oh, poor beings, I'm sorry, I'm telling you. Living in this world is, is like in a jungle, in a maze or something. You can never know. You don't even know who is your master even. You don't even know who is what. Yeah? How can you even know who is a master even? Yeah? This kind of person who attained this kind of samadhi already can talk, have eloquence, yeah? Convince people, especially those who have no no idea about meditation or dharma or anything, of course, they would be more in trouble. And not just following him, but even fall into hell. This is really tragic. If you blindly follow him, it's not your fault. How come you even have to go to hell? What law is this? I want to tell you, I'm very angry sometimes with the so-called rules in this world and the maya and all that. That's why I work day and night, because I cannot bear all this kind of injustice and pain that, that measure upon all beings, the animals, the humans, anyone, any alike. No one escapes, no one they, they would even relent. Yeah, the animals, what can they do? Or even human, what can they do? Huh? They heard that, okay, God is great, Buddha is great, they want to follow, they want to learn, they want to, to be enlightened, huh? they want to get out of suffering. What have they done wrong? But you are not me, you cannot understand my pain, my pain in the heart. Because what have they done? What have the people done? Even if they follow the wrong teacher and wrong view, what have they done? They no harm nobody. If they go on the street and say, oh, I'm great, I'm great, because they, they misunderstand their greatness, they misunderstand their spiritual value, what have they done to anybody? You got that? You understand my anger, my, my pain? When they talk nonsense and they apply this kind of cruelty on anybody, I mean, really, it's on anyone. Nambhoktakwa, imagine. Hell is, is not fun. Huh? And relentless hell even, just because of wrong view. My God! I see only pain. That is unjustified pain and suffering for the innocent. If somebody kills somebody, okay, maybe you go to hell, fine. It's just uh, stupid, follow the wrong view. And this man, he has no proper guidance teacher, so he fall in the wrong state of attainment. That's all. And go to hell. And Buddha won't tell lie. You know what I'm saying? Just put them into hell just like that. Huh? Wouldn't you be angry if it's your children? You would do more than that. For me, these helpless people are like children. Understand me? Because they don't know anything. They're just like children, easily being cheated, seduced, 
misled, yeah? So it's like those innocent teenage outside, the drug people use their innocence to, to, to seduce them into bad habit, and then they become bad because they have no money to buy drugs, then they go steal, they go do this and that, and then they become criminal, just like that. Hmm? No matter if the Maya right or wrong, it's all wrong. It's all wrong to punish people for the things that they don't know what they're doing. Yeah? That's why Jesus forgive those who crucify Him, because please, Father, they don't know what they're doing. Truly, they don't know what they're doing. Even animals feeling sorry for humans when they're killing them. They're going to kill them, they, they cry, not for them, but they feel, they feel sorry for the humans, because they don't know what they're doing. They will get a lot more punishment than, than the animal just get. See, the animal just being killed and dying, however brutal, but die. But they don't know, the humans who kill them don't know, they go to, to hell for I don't know how long, and being punished and being tortured forever. You know, like the story I told you about the, the man who killed chicken to make soup and, and sell? Yeah. Lucky Kwan Yin Bodhisattva interfered, otherwise he would continue being, you know, in hell forever. Not just swallow some hot coal and then being free and, and giving another chance again. You see that? That was a true story, no? But then how many people would believe him? and quit their crude way of life. Not too many. You can see that. You can see. How many people in Vietnam would read this story and, and even believe it? Huh? Oh man, there's endless, endless suffering in this world. Further, in this state of samadhi, the good person sees the disintegration of the form skanda and understands the feeling skanda. In this, in his refined understanding, this is more refined now, huh? he awakens completely to subtle principles. Everything is in accord with his wishes. He may suddenly experience limitless lightness and ease in his mind. He may say that he has become a sage and attained great self-mastery. This is called attaining lightness and clarity due to wisdom. He's already something big shot. If he understands, then there is no error. This experience does not indicate, says Hut. The Buddha passed through all this, otherwise he wouldn't have known to teach you. Okay? But he mastered it, yeah? Even the Maya sent some beautiful girl, sexy, come dancing, seducing him, he said, get lost. <laughs> I know who you are, get lost. Same Jesus, meditate in the desert forty days, remember? Yes. Also Maya come and tell him, if you respect, bow to me, I give you the whole world. What did he say? Get lost also. Okay, now. But if he considers himself a sage, then a demon that likes lightness and clarity will enter his mind. <sighs> I'm telling you. So cut it off if you think you're Buddha, yeah? Cut it off, all of you, <laughs> whoever, whoever telling me that you're on a seven or nine spiritual plane, yeah. Claiming that he is already satisfied, he will not strive to make further progress. That is the problem with all these stages that we have mentioned, that the Buddha has mentioned. You have to feel too good. You never felt like this before in your whole life. There's something new. But these are just toys. It's like children, you know, you have good toy, bad toy, or more enchanting toys, and more new toys, more invented toys, but these are toys yet. If he's satisfied with that, he will not know all the real toys, you know. He play with the small cars, he didn't know there is a real one. Yeah. Oh, this is a problem. Yeah. If we are not satisfied with that, then we go further. But if we think we are great already, then we stop. That is a problem. Yeah. It's a pity, yeah? 
For the most part, such cultivators will become like the unlearned bhikshu, monk, huh? unlearned monk. He will mislead living beings so that they will fall into the avicii hell. All this is worse. Like in proper samadhi, he will certainly fall. My God, Maya, so cruel. That is a problem. If you really want to become a Buddha, he will be so harsh on you. That is the thing. That's why. Otherwise, how can you put somebody in hell? He's just practicing. Maybe he has not become a Buddha, but he harmed no one. You see that? They make all kind of this, you know, I'm telling you, <laughs> rule. Really? What kind of rule is that? What kind of law is that? Huh? This guy, he just practiced, maybe he don't have teachers, or he mistaken thinking that he become Buddha. Fine, but he harms no one, right? He may be boasting or being arrogant, but that's uh, nobody's business, huh? And if anybody is stupid enough following him, it's also not his fault. Why you have to go to hell? A witchy hell is the hell that you can't get out. So woe to you if you want to become a Buddha and not controlling your desire or, or your ambition or your mind. Huh? You must always humble, humble. I'm nobody yet, okay? Nobody. Just a little light and little sound, not yet, okay? Actually, most of you don't think that you will become a Buddha. <laughs> You would think that, okay, Master Power will help you to be liberated and go to higher levels so you don't have to suffer again and your five, six, nine generations don't suffer. I think that is good enough. Okay, huh? Yes. To be Buddha, look at that, huh? I read this long, long time ago. I forgot that it's so gruesome like this. I forgot that it's so terrible. <sighs> but it's good to know, huh? It's good to know, so you can avoid trouble. Mm? Okay. Further, <laughs> still continue. <laughs> Further, in this state of samadhi, the good person sees. You know, he know. He see that it's all the form that he saw, the scenery, is all from skanda. He already know it. At least he knows that it's an uh, illusion, and at least he know. He understands. That is just the skanda feeling, and all that is all illusionary. It's not real. He know that. But still, huh? And in this clear awakening, he experiences an illusory clarity. Within that, suddenly he may veer towards the view of eternal or extinction, deny cause and effect. He denied, he rejected the karma theory, the karma, uh, you know, law. Yes, and then, and take everything as empty. There's nothing at all, don't worry, no karma, whatever you do, it has no effect, no, uh, no hell, no heaven, nothing. The thought of emptiness so predominates that he comes to believe that there is eternal extinction after death, meaning there's nothing after you die. Yeah, he's so convinced because he, he sees so many things, he sees all the ten directions, and he sees that all the elements that made up his body, it's just illusion anyway. During Samadhi, he don't feel he has a nose, a hand, a ears, eye, nothing, no body. So, so he feels that this is nothing really real. So when you die, also finito. This is bad. You know why? Because then you can do anything without fearing the consequences of the afterlife, without fearing hell. Maybe because of that, someone has attained this stage or following someone who at attained this kind of view, they become fanatic. Nothing that, that can scare them, nothing or illusion anyway. But this is called the mental state of samadhi dissolving, so that one loses sight of what is right. 
Ah, if he understands, then there is no error. This experience still does not indicate sagehood. But if he considers himself a sage, then a demon of emptiness will enter his mind. How can you believe that such a high stage of enlightenment already still, the, the demon still can use your mind? Understand? Because the mind is not the soul. Yeah, the mind is, is, is a subtle, a higher, higher kind of uh, instrument. The brain is instrument, yeah, physical, we understand that. The mind is just a more refined computer, yeah, high tech. <laughs> the mind is made at the second level. Therefore, if you go down from the fifth level to, to this world to do something or to help, beings, you have to go through the second level to be equipped <laughs> with the mind. It's just like if you want to dive into the sea, you must go and wear this kind of frock clothes, yeah, like that. So the mind is easily to be swayed, that's why, because it's not high level, it's not the soul, it's not eternal, it's just made by second level. It's just like one of the clothing you have to wear when you go down to this world. Without the mind, you can't function here. <laughs> the mind dictates the brain, the brain dictates the body. And if the mind is wrong, everything belongs to you, wrong. You're thinking wrong, you act wrong, yeah. you behave wrong. Wow! So, the demon of emptiness can enter somebody else's mind like this. And then he will, he will slander the holding of precepts, even he slandered the moral codes, yeah. calling it a practice of the initial vehicle, meaning he looked down upon the people who hold a precept and the moral uh, standard as just, you know, like a baby, like <laughs> kindergarten. Yeah, imagine. He will say, since the bodhisattvas have awakened to emptiness, what is there to hold or violate? This is also dangerous. That means he don't care what he does, eh? and then he might do something wrong, harm other beings that he thinks is no problem anyway. Yeah, I saw some do this. Maybe not to that extreme, but uh, I heard many, and not many, but because I don't know that many people. I saw some story in some of the magazine, you know, spiritual magazine, some of the monks say, Oh, I already make peace in the world, <laughs> meaning because everything is empty, war and peace is no problem, no need to worry about it. Mean because inside he has peace already, meaning that even outside no peace, inside he has peace. So if you have peace inside, that means outside doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter who die, who kill each other, that this they still suffer, you know, even illusionally, the, the beings still suffer in war. So you cannot say it, it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> just because you have peace. It's just like a rich person. Every day he eats a lot of food and then he says, Oh, what means hungry? And hungry is no problem. Huh? Uh, it's all garbage talk. Yeah? Tell, him, tell them to eat cakes, <laughs> just like <laughs> the Queen of, of France. Because she has no idea. She lost touch with. In real life, yeah? Same, this person like that. Wow, there's so many, huh? Mm. Mm. There's so many, so many. But the Buddha has also told you here how to guard yourself and how to continue progress, yeah? If we have time, and continue further, okay? Right now, I continue with the demon, <laughs> so that you will recognize when they come, <clears throat> and then you can protect yourself, okay, and go for higher. Oh my God! Okay. So, because of this false view, influenced by this kind of demon, he will uh, slander those withholding the precepts, like the monks, the nuns, they are strict with their precepts, he will look down upon them, he will degrade them, he will slander them. That is a no-no, of course. Huh? 
if, even if you're not a monk, you know, a monk, if he has his moral code, then it's good, right? At least good for him, good for society. Why, why go and slander them, yeah? Now, but not only that, he thinks he already attained emptiness, everything is empty, everything illusion, yeah? so he can do what he wants. So further than that, he will... This person in the presence of his faithful dana parties, meaning his, um, his uh, so-called disciples, yeah? yeah, will often drink wine, eat meat, and engage in wanton lust. The power of the demon will keep his followers from doubting or denouncing him, even if he's doing all this wrong thing, uh, drinking wine, drinking alcohol, eating meat, engaging in lustful conduct. But the demon power is so strong that anyone who near him, near this person, will be kept from being doubtful. I have no demon to control you. <laughs> yeah, of course, at least you're free, okay? You're free. If you doubt me, at least you know you're free. <laughs> Nobody control you, yeah? So even if I'm wrong, you have no danger, because you, you're free to doubt or not doubt, you see that? At least, huh? You doubt me, it's good. I wasn't angry at all. I'm just saying, oh, you see all that experience, and you still doubt me, but I never f felt angry or so angry. No, I, I wasn't, okay? That means good. <laughs> that means it's good. That means that you are free, that I don't oppress you or saying something or psychologically uh, suppress you so that you don't dare to even doubt me. You're all free, even you enlightened or not, you're free. <laughs> because if a master uses some magical power or some psychic or something, then you'll be hold under his or her sway. You, you, you don't even, cannot even think the master is wrong. Here, this person, because of demon power, so even though he drink wine, eat meat, and engage in lust and all that, wanton lust, not just having a, a wife or a husband, wanton lust meaning just random, meaning no good, all the time, any time. So, so this is no good. The power of the demon will keep his followers from doubting or denouncing him even. After the ghost has possessed him for a long time, he may even consume excrement and urine or meat and wine, claiming that all such things are empty anyway. Whew. He will break the Buddha's moral precepts and mislead people into committing offenses. Like improper samadhi, he will certainly fall. He fell already. He fell already. Huh? Not I certainly fall, but he fell already. Further, in, if, you know, if he continue with this state, Further, in this state of samadhi, the good person sees the disintegration of the form skanda and understands the feeling skanda. He savors the state of illusory clarity, and it deeply enters his mind and bones, become his nature then. Boundless love may suddenly well forth from his mind. When that love becomes extreme, he goes insane with greed and lust. The Buddha don't mean love as, as loving, but as uh, this kind of uh, sexual, you know, uh, attachment love, yeah? In this world we use everything, love, 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 it's all confusing, yeah? But the Buddha means bodily attachment, yeah? And that's why if it's become more extreme, then he goes insane with greed and lust. He cannot stop. So but this state is called when an agreeable state of somebody enters one's mind, lacking the wisdom to control oneself and mistakenly engaging in lustful behavior. Okay. If he understands that it's just one of the states, okay, then it will pass. Then there is no error. This experience does not indicate sexual. Of course not. <laughs> How can you are sage if you still have greed and lust? But if he considers himself a sage, then a demon of desire will enter his mind. Oh God. 
so many demons, when we will even see any Bodhisattva enter somebody's mind and help something. <laughs> I want to turn the table. Yeah, really. Just demons all the time is no fun. Uh, the Buddha and Bodhisattva, why are they so gentle? Why don't they just do something? Turn the table, huh? Oh man, I have to look into this. I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> I really don't like it. That's not fair. I don't like it that the Buddha has to suffer so much life after life, kaupas after kaupas, so that he can just save a handful of his disciples like that and still be in slanders, still be in doubted. I don't like that. Never mind if this is all illusion or life after life, illusion or not, never mind. It is still suffering. He still has to carry on the flesh body. And when you have the flesh, you suffer. Huh? He even has to become animals or insects even. Like I told you the story about the gecko and all that. Uh. And then the demon of desire will enter his mind, then he will become an outspoken advocate of lust, calling it the way to body. body. Oh man, you know one of them are like that. Not, not long ago, no? some years ago. Yeah, advocate lust, for sure. That is true. I saw it printed. His preaching about lustful encouragement uh, printed on newspaper. It's printed like that. Yeah, I was surprised, you know, but a lot, a lot of people follow him and they worship him. Oh, I heard many stories. It was really true, eh? You know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many people. If you think I have a lot of followers, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's just, it just a one centimeter what I have as followers compared to one meter long or two, three, ten meters. It's very appealing to the world. Of people. Very appealing. Yeah. They call each other, come here, come and have a look, come and listen here. <laughs> They're selling things, they go there, you know, selling their house and stuff. You go there to listen. I went all over the world and <laughs> look at how many I have. <laughs> Don't even have a house <laughs> for you. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> okay. If that was so easy, yeah? I'm too strict, you know. Must be vegan, huh? Must meditate two and a half hours, huh? Must keep the five precepts, yeah? Who like that? <laughs> how many people want? To, to follow a woman who asked them to do this kind of thing against their own habit and nature. So don't, don't, don't compare me to other masters. I don't have a lot of disciples, for sure. I don't need, I don't care. <laughs> if you're my disciple, so-called disciple, you must meditate, eat vegan, five precepts. And that is that. <laughs> no bargain, okay? okay. Yeah. <laughs> if you're my disciple, so-called disciple, you must meditate, eat vegan, five precepts, and that is that. <laughs> no bargain, okay? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> if, <laughs> I'm Chongkapa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> precepts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somebody called me Chongkapa when I was uh, no, I did, wasn't a monk. I was just, uh, you know, going from one ashram to another. I'm just wearing Punjabi white, just I have uh, two, three pairs of clothes. That's all, white clothes, you know, and long hair, and it's like everybody. And they keep calling me Chongkapa <laughs> always. Hey, Chongkapa, <laughs> how are you, Chongkapa? I did. At that time, I had no idea who Chong Kapa was. I said, who? Chong who? <laughs> I said, my name is so-and-so at that time, yeah? And Chong Ka who? <laughs> I wasn't studying Tibetan Buddhism at that time. Huh? I don't know what it is. You don't know? No, no. Oh, okay, okay. He was the, um, the founder of Gelukpa, of Geluk. Geluk uh, School in Tibet. Chongkapa was a lama, uh, the, the founder of Geluk School. 
the Gelugsku is the one that wear yellow hat, and he was the one who strictly follow the precept. And he teach his monks and his lay disciples, they have to follow the Buddha precept strictly. He's the one that very, very strict. No meat, no wine, no marriage, no woman, no violating any precept at all. Yeah? Not even eat garlic, onion, all that. Very strict, uh, Tsongkhapa. Okay? And uh, he's supposed to be the first Dalai Lama, but he doesn't want. And people wanted him to be king of Tibet. He also did not want. But he's a king of Tibet in people's heart. And he's a Dalai Lama of all the Dalai Lama. He's a real monk, yeah? Uh, because he wants to revive the Buddhist tradition in Tibet. Yes. So uh, there are many traditions in Tibet, yeah? Tibetan Buddhism. Yeah? Some yellow head, red head, there are different traditions. Some tradition maybe you could also marry, yeah, maybe like that. Therefore, he said, no, no, monk, no marry, no woman, no wine, no meat. Yeah. So he's the one that's famous for very strictly adhering to the precepts of the Buddha. Very famous for that. I knew it only afterward. After they keep calling me Chonkapa <laughs> many times, I go to the Tibetan uh, library and ask him, who is Chonkapa? <laughs> And uh, they also don't know very much, but there's a book, <laughs> Tibetan monk, you know, you go and look, and there were some in English. So then I learned about that. I don't know much more, okay? That's all I knew, that he is very strict with precepts. Yeah, other tradition, uh, other lama or that, I don't hear about this uh, strict precept. Only Chongkapa was very strict, okay? He's supposed to be the first Dalai Lama, but his successor, become official Dalai Lama, mean the ocean of wisdom. Okay? Thank you, Master. You're welcome. <laughs> I was just joking when I said I'm Chongkapa because I'm also very strict. You know, at least five precepts, yeah? Five precepts is the parents of all other precepts. Yeah, because if you don't kill, then of course you become vegetarian or vegan, no? Vegan, huh? If you don't tell lie, then you would not slander other people because you don't know if it's true or not. Yeah, and you keep quiet because you, everyone is Buddha, you don't want to slander him. Yeah, many other precepts, the five precepts, and further on is the ten precepts for the other high a little bit. But five precepts, good enough. If you keep the five precepts as a lay people, that's okay already. And be vegan, meditate, okay? Be good, be compassionate, helping others, whatever you can. That's all I ask, nothing else. I don't take any money from you. I don't take anything from you, and you know that. So at least you are no harm in my hands, okay? <laughs> in my teaching, you have no harm, no, no loss. Nothing. Hmm? So, <laughs> boundless love. This is not a very good translation, meaning some uh, overflowing kind of desire for physical love. That should be a better translation, okay? But maybe for lack of words, the translator used boundless love. Normally we use boundless love in, in connection with God or Buddha or saint. Yeah? This is not the love that it meant. Otherwise, it wouldn't say he goes insane with greed and lust. So it's, it's a not a good translation. So I just want to tell you, boundless love in here is not correct. Okay? So this state is called when an agreeable state of samadhi enters one's mind, lacking the wisdom to control oneself and mistakenly engaging in lustful behavior. Yeah, we went a little bit astray because I remember the incident. I remember that person. Yeah. Because he truly did not mean to cheat anybody. Yeah. But this experience does not indicate sagehood. Yeah. 
not only he himself may be engaging in lustful behavior, but he encouraged and he praised it. And he even slandered those uh, priests and monks, saying, because their lack of sex, therefore they are like this, they are like that, they don't know what to say, they're kind of not worthy or not intelligent. That's the way he talked about other priests and monks. You understand? Yes. Maybe you like sex or whatever, fine, but why you have to slander somebody who doesn't want to have sex? There is no sin, there's no stupidity in, in avoiding physical contact with woman or man. No sin in it is there. No harm in anyone. Why slander them? That was my question when I read these articles. I could not believe my eyes. And yet so famous, so waka, so limitless disciples everywhere. And big house, a lot of cars. I have to not much because <laughs> I want to save my money for people who need, you know, and for SMTV, for other things. Yeah? Okay. But don't think I'm stingy, okay? <laughs> Nothing is mine, really. Uh, it's all yours. It's all yours. <laughs> I only use what I have to do. I only do what I have to do. Wearing all this stuff, or makeup, all this, it's not my idea. I don't like it. <laughs> it's too much time consuming and troublesome. Not free enough, but never mind. I do what I have to, okay? Yeah, you even have to become prostitute if you want to save sentient beings. So for me, just a little lipstick, it's okay, it's bearable. I complain, but it's bearable. Okay? At least I look pretty to you, oh woman. <laughs> now, what I'm saying, so really, truly, this state exists, huh? Oh, there's a very high state already. Imagine you go through so many states and so many demons before you can arrive here. And then the demon of lust and greed catch you. Oh, God. Oh, please, protect all beings, we could never get out. <laughs> if there's not the mercy from God or, or saints, we could never get out. Don't you think so? Never, never con. Never, get out. never. You already so high here. See all the scandal, this soul, everything is illusion, knowing this, nothing, and still fall into this emptiness and desire stuff and doing wrong thing, and leading hundreds of thousands or, I don't know, millions into wrong thing, and slander the, the virtuous and moral people. That is the worst thing that you could do. Maybe you fall into your lustful desire state yourself, okay, but not slandering the morally Sound and, and virtuous monks and nuns and priests, that is no good. That is terrible. That will earn you hell for a long time. I wish, I hope the Buddha be mercy and save those people who are misled at least. <sighs> when I was in Europe, I, I want to buy land. Uh, those years, yeah, I keep looking everywhere, but nothing really uh, suitable. Maybe it's not the time, maybe it's not meant to be. And then I uh, asked the, the people, you know, the, those monks and nuns who take care of the money department, I say, how much do we have? <laughs> how much money do we have before we go looking <laughs> for land? <laughs> I, don't want, I, don't want, I don't want to borrow money. I pay for what I want, and if I don't have money, I just don't buy. Very simple philosophy, right? Even for you, if I don't have, I don't buy. Yeah, I don't want to borrow. If I die tomorrow, I will own a debt, then I have to come back and be a master again. Oh, God forbid! <laughs> Anything but not that. <laughs> yeah, if you have been a master all the time, you can't be anything else except some kind of master. Remember, I take my vow, like I will save all my... Uh, I say, even if I'm born as a human, although very suffering and the life is n nothing good here for me, but much, still much better than beings who fall into hell and suffer every day, every second. So if I have any merit at all at that time, yeah, my two monks and nuns, 
teacher tell me to make a wish. I said, if I have any merit at all from now, past life or in the future, I will give it all to those, the worst suffering beings. And then I can be reborn again and human as long as I can be a human again and I earn more merit. You know, just don't put me in hell because I cannot earn any merit there. <laughs> just let me come back to become a human, even though human life is nothing interesting. It's suffering, but still better than being in be hell like other people. So I, I can share my merit, whatever I have to those people, to the being, the worst one, the worst suffering people. And then all the incense girl, remember that? Yes. Mm. If I knew what it is, I probably did not. <laughs> no, no, I, I should have known. You know, my soul knows. That's what I'm saying. If you practice spiritually, even if you were reborn again as an ignorant woman, you will not lose it. Otherwise, why would a girl, 20 something years old, you know, seriously in front of the Buddhas and the monks' teachers make such a vow like that? Yeah? Why? Nobody teach me that. It's just natural, because I have those seeds in a former life. That's why I make such a wish. And normally you will wish, okay, I have a good husband now. <laughs> you know, I'll be rich, or at least something. Huh? Or maybe uh, help me to uh, be enlightened, at least, you know, something like that. But no, I want to give all my merit to the most suffering people, uh, most suffering being, and, and content to be reborn again as human so that, you know, all the merit will be given away. So if I have not studied before somehow some, uh, with some enlightened master or being a master or something to do with that, I would have never come to this thinking to make a wish like that, right? It's logical, right? Yeah, I only met the monks a few weeks before that. And I only read Amitabha Sutra or Kwan Yin Purisava. I, was, I have not even been given this sutra yet. I wasn't worthy <laughs> to be reading this. Yeah, my, my teachers say that. Uh, it's very good. They subdue my ego. Yeah? They praise me that, oh, I want to be a Buddhist. This is very good. You have good merit in the past, for sure. But still, on the other hand, they put me down. You are not worthy to, to see this sutra yet. They give me some small uh, medicine Buddha, you know, some very harmless and simple. Oh, Kwan Yin Bodhisattva, if you recite her name, uh, she protect you, something like that. But this one, no. After a while, she gave me Kristi Kappa Sutra, you know, the Buddha that uh, stay in the hell, but well, not this one, no. <laughs> after a long time. So at that time, nobody teach me anything about dedicating merit to the other suffer being. So it must have been the seed from former life. Yeah? That's why I told you, if you practice now and you're humble enough and you just don't uh, think you are sage, then even if you die and you have not reached uh, the complete uh, liberation, you still have the seed in you and you continue being a good human yeah? or being a charitable person and earning more merit and then continue your path. Yeah? Mm. But I don't want to let that happen to you. <laughs> Even if you're low or high, you go up first. <laughs> don't, don't stay here. No. <laughs> because if you get out of this, even if you're an astro or second level, it's easier to find master there, you know, because you already learned something with me. So you are not just a nobody. <laughs> they will let you enter in this, meditation hall, that lecture hall, to listen to other masters, even if I'm not there. But I will not leave you. Of course I will not leave you. I will continue teaching you. Thank you. All right, then. So if uh, this experience, you know, of uh, lacking wisdom to control and mistakenly engaging in lustful behavior. So he just mistakenly thinking that he's good. And the demon, I guess, you know, oppressing his mind, make him do this. Yeah. But if he does consider himself a sage, then a demon of desire will enter his mind. Yeah, he will 
become outspoken advocate of lust and all that. Yeah, you know, it, it was really, a, so my God, an obvious example of this state. The guy just mistaken and being controlled because he could not have enough wisdom to control himself. So it say here, lacking the wisdom to control oneself and mistakenly engaging, mistakenly only. But because of that, even have to go to hell, believe it or not. Oh, the Maya, they are mostly more after these practitioners, any practitioner, because they don't want them to become Buddha. They don't want them to attain the stage that they could be powerful enough to save him, well, even one more soul, not to talk about save a lot of souls. Yeah, it's to be pity, actually. You know, whoever that was, just a victim. Yeah, he could have continued further. But the problem is that when you attain a little bit of something, and yeah, maybe you have some light or you have some wisdom, some eloquence, then the other people come. Bravo! And they worship you, they touch your feet, they boost your ego, and then you, you cannot get out anymore because you have to continue talking to them and satisfy their, their you know, desire to want to listen to you, for example, like that. And this is a trouble. And especially if you talk they, just the way they want, you know, uh, no need to do anything, no need to eat vegetarian, no need to meditate, everything is all empty, yeah? Uh, no sin, no merit, nothing. Okay. But then he will teach this person eh, who has been possessed by the demon of desire. He will teach his lay followers to indi- indiscriminately engage in acts of lust. He even does that, yeah? teach his followers to engage in all kinds of... of uh, Lustful, calling those who commit acts of lust hairs to his teachings, even. Encouraging. He's so blindfolded by the Maya, you know, by the demon. That's the problem. So the power of spirits and ghosts in the ending age will enable him to attract a following of ordinary, naive people, numbering 100, 200, 500, or 600, or as many as 1,000 or 10,000. More than that. At that time, the Indian population is small, <laughs> so the Buddha cannot think that it should be many fold than 10,000. Yeah. When the demon becomes bored, it will leave the person's body. Once the person's charisma is gone, he will run afoul of the law. He will mislead living beings so that they fall into the relentless hells. Lacking proper samadhi, he will certainly fall. Fail already. Ananda, all ten of these states may occur in Diana as one's mental effort interacts with the feeling skanda. Dull and confused living beings do not evaluate themselves. Encountering such situations, in their confusion, they fail to recognize them and say that they have become sages, thereby uttering a great lie, they will fall into the relentless hell. In the Dharma ending age, after my nirvana, all of you should pass on the Tathagata's teachings so that all living beings can awaken to their meaning. Do not let the demons of the heavens have their way Offer protection so that all can realize the unsurpassed way. Okay, there are more stages of uh, enlightenment and cultivation after this. So the Buddha has just finished all the uh, explanation about the traps and the demons who are not really good at all for any practitioners, the vulnerable one without teachers. Yeah. That's why they, that the person who, who encourages yeah, people to have lustful action always say he has no teacher. He don't need any teacher. He himself, always a teacher, being a teacher, never a student. Yeah. They say he's never a student. He has many teachers, but he, he is never a student. You know. Yeah. 
So there are more, but uh, uh, there are sixty levels of sagehood. Even. Yeah, this is the following. Okay, so many, so many. Yeah, they are still demonic influence during all the sixty stage. So. We will never finish, huh? <laughs> yeah. We should really thank the past masters, monks, and nuns, and scholars who have taken time to record the Buddha's teaching after the masters and nirvana, and also for the past and present persons, lay or monks or nuns who have really dedicated themselves, sacrificed their time and precious health or under any difficult situation to translate this so that I can read it to you. And we have to thank them. And may they be blessed forever by all the Buddhas, past, present and future. May their merit be immense. May they be liberated forever. Thank you. Okay, I will stop. For now, we can just chat, or you may ask me any question you want. Okay? We continue next time, huh? If you stay, then maybe I will continue to read, 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 read. Any question? Yeah. Earlier when you told me uh, that on a level that my doubt was good, mm. and I wanted to tell you that that's why my doubt is comforted, mm. because I don't feel dogma. You know, mm. I, I was a seeker for my whole life. I went mm. through many different religions and through mm. many different churches. And, and the thing that always pushed me away the most was not feeling like I could ask questions, not huh. feeling like I could think for myself and wonder and, you know, and when you said that to me, and also it's not the first time, you've said similar things in your books and your other lectures, and mm. those are the things that drew me to you the most mm. and made me feel the most comfortable. When the doubting mind speaks, it's mm. that kind of answer that makes me feel like I really belong here as mm. part of your family, and I just wanted to again express my appreciation for that, okay. so thank you. <laughs> Uh, good for you. Good for you. Yes. Your doubt is truly sincere, not like to provoke me or to put me down or degrade in me or anything. That's why I feel good about your doubt. Yeah. Uh, if somebody else have different doubts, you know, like trying to make himself look uh, smart in front of me and uh, like, uh, like put me down in front of other people and all that, which is no good for him, karma, bad, then I would scold him instead of <laughs> uh, welcoming like you. Doubts and doubts are different, okay? You are doubting whether or not I teach you the right thing or not, whether or not you follow the right person, because you sincerely want to really find a master, find a way to be liberated. That is different. The spiritual doubt is always welcome. It's very healthy, not personal attack. That is different, okay? <laughs> Why are you crying again? Because <laughs> you inspire me and make me feel so right. Yeah? It's a good crying. It's yeah, it's good, good. <laughs> All right, good. Thank you. Can you can cry because you're touched, yeah? Yeah, you, you touched, feel, that's yeah. the word. Thank you. You feel, uh, you feel like uh, you're correct, yeah? <laughs> it's good. That is a different doubt. And it's a different from slander or trying to to look cool in front of uh, others and, and uh, like putting your master down, uh, personal attack. That's different. But this is pure spiritual doubt. This is your birthright, and you must doubt. You must doubt until you really completely prove it that what you are doing, what the path you're following, is correct for you. Because you have only this chance. If you follow the wrong master, you must know it. Then you have to quit. 
you, you still have a chance to go find another master. You must doubt. Your time is precious. Your life is yours. You can't afford to just go hold to anybody and okay, do whatever she, he said. And it's your life. It's very important. It's your precious life, your valuable time. You must doubt until you resolve it, okay? If no doubt, then you can never understand you follow the true or not true, yeah? You must have doubt. You must have enough intelligence and wisdom to discern this. Otherwise, you can never put your whole heart into what you're following, I mean, the teaching. So it's just different from degrading or slandering, the ego stuff. Yeah, it's different. All right, good. <laughs> I'm proud of you. <laughs> yeah, I have an apple juice <laughs> as a reward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Master, if it's possible to, uh, to you, uh, change the roof of the Maya. Change yes. the roof of the Maya of, in this world. Because many masters are coming, save some souls. But I think he, they cannot change the rules of the Maya. If it's possible to you, Master, change, change those the rules? rules? I don't know. <laughs> I think so. Because I have not tried. I don't know yet. I'm just fighting. <laughs> I don't know if we can change. But at least we have something good. We have peace, many peace nowadays. It's just newly peace in Yemen, yeah? Yeah. They we have oh, peace one piece after another these days. I'm happy, yeah? Okay? And you are vegans, yeah, at least how many lives suffering saved, okay? At least that. And furthermore, I cannot uh, promise, I also don't know if I'm big shot or anything. I try. I'm just angry with Maya and I argue with him all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I don't think he can beat me in argument because I, I'm right. Yeah. We know, we know nothing. <laughs> I'm not like arrogant or anything. What I mean is, I, what I say is logical. How can anybody put somebody in hell to suffer relentlessly just because he mistaken that he's a Buddha? He didn't do anything on purpose, yeah? It's just a Maya influenced him, and he, and he has never had such a blissful state before in his life or any other life, yeah? Somehow he's lucky enough to reach there. So. If he mistakenly thinking he's a Buddha or he has reached God, is it no sin? Is there? No, no. Well, unless he misleads somebody else doing something bad, like advocating for lust or steal or greed, then it's no good, of course. But the other state before that, they do nothing wrong. For example, then still go to hell. This is nonsense. This is a blind revenge. It's nothing good. So I don't know if I can change complete the rules, yeah? Because also because maybe I don't have enough support from humans, yeah? If people believe what I'm saying, then I have more support. But not all of them do. Some of them even not just reject, but slander and making more trouble for me. And the Maya was like, you see? See? Nobody have respect for your view. <laughs> Just like uh, Buddha say, I can live forever, Ananda say nothing. His foremost, closest associate, disciple, every day with him. And many lifetimes also, not just this lifetime, the Buddha always with Ananda, even when he was uh, uh, animals, or just a normal merchant or something, uh, Ananda always nearby, do something with him. Yeah. Uh, even one time, um, Ananda was a king, and the Buddha was an elephant, and then that elephant also will come to Ananda, for example. They're always together. Even then, uh, he had not awakened enough to say, Buddha, then please stay. Yeah. And then the Maya comes, see, nobody wants you. Even your foremost disciple, he did not express his desire to, to want you be here. Maybe because he doesn't want to continue to be your attendant and serving you forever. Uh, Maya, talk anything. Maya can lie even. Oh, I scold him endlessly. You have no idea. I scold him a lot. I say, you liar. Yeah, he tried to make trouble. Tell me lies. A lot of lies. 
and sometimes uh, using the name of some heavenly being to tell me stuff. But I know, I know. I scold him a lot all the time. I say, this is really petty. This is below even Maya's dignity. I don't do this again, you know. Uh, in my eyes, you are just worse than dust because you tell lies. Yeah. Yeah, there's no end to this Maya stuff. Yeah. I don't know why he has to resort to lying to me. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions? Uh, okay. Tell me. Uh, la maestra dijo que necesitaba soporte para que quizás pueda cambiar las, las reglas del Maya. Entonces quiero preguntar a la maestra. Si, si quizá no tenga tanto soporte, pero con algunas almas eh, sinceras, es suficiente como para que la maestra pueda cambiar las reglas del maya por el bien de las futuras generaciones. He's asking if uh, you don't have enough support of the humans to change the rules of the maya, mm -hmm. but if you have enough uh, sincere. Um, uh, a few, a few sincere, a few sincere, uh, a few sincere uh, supporters to, to, to support you. Do I have? Yes, yes. yes Master. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Look, Master. Yes, Master. <laughs> if it's enough, si es suficiente. Oh, <laughs> gracias. No sabe. I'm not sure. Okay. No, it's good. No, sir. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Of course I want that, yeah? But uh, I'm not sure how is it going to be, okay? All right, come here, brother. From, your, from your teaching before, yes. I've learned from you that, uh, like I said, I've read the Bible many times, but I didn't fully grasp it, yeah. digest the meaning of it. Mm. But when I listen to you uh, explain the sutras and some of the things that you've said about the Bible, mm. earlier I did not get the connection. Mm. But now I can get the connections oh. from all of the things that you said and the, the relationship like you and Christ Jesus. Mm. And people don't see the real connection no, that like you, like you have. Yes, I do. Oh. For example, Jesus said that I'm going to prepare a place for you. He yeah. said that to his disciples in oh. my father's house in many abodes. Oh, yes. And did. so when you tell us that you're taking us to up above the fifth level, mm. it's the same thing. You oh, are preparing. I forgot he said that. Also, didn't he? Yes, yes. It's the same he thing. You're preparing that, huh? a place for us. Oh, so, yes, he did. And he, he said, where I will be, you will be with me always. Oh, yes, he did, right? Yeah. <sighs> and the same thing. So you you we remember know. everything. I don't remember all this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we know that we will always be with you. I remember now that I know that. It's just that it didn't occur to me. Just now, when you told me, I remember I read those. And the same way uh, you are fighting with Maya mm. for us, mm. Christ said the same thing. He uh, told his disciples that, that he prayed for them. Mm. He interceded with them. Because they were weak. Yes. And so he had to protect them. They wanted to take them and sift them as with wheat. Yes. But he spared them, mm -hmm. leave them alone, or give them some grace, or mm -hmm. give them some leeway. Mm -hmm. And so you're the same way with what you're saying to us now, that uh, you don't like what's going on yes. in uh, in this level of heaven, mm. the way you have to reap what you sow because it's it's too tough. Yeah. Christ said the same thing. Yeah. That it's impossible for us. Impossible. The he way said I it's see. impossible. Yes. But God with God, yes. all things are possible. It's right. That's right. If no God we we just don't. <laughs> if not God grace, we are doomed forever. And I seen the way that Christ got angry at all of the things that were going on when he went in the temple. And he, was, he was very angry. Yeah. And so I, I look at the comparison. Like, for example, Christ said he sent a comforter. Yeah. And so uh, you're the comforter. Oh, you so sure. <laughs> you are taking us up and you are helping us to get in place. I would like to, of course. <laughs> I see all of the things and... and 
it's, it's just become amazing to me. And we are so happy that you're <laughs> fighting for it. I'm happy too. Thank you. He makes it also more clear, right? Yeah. I, I did not remember all that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, now that you tell me, I was also a very hot temper when I was younger. I was uh, just a newly nun, you know, not nobody yet, okay? I went to a temple mm, because there was a nun who lives there. Uh, one of uh, your sisters have a mother who became a nun and stayed at home there. And next to her home, there's a real temple. And then one of the nuns is the abbess of that temple. Well, that is just no, no concern with her, yeah. So I, of course I went there to see them, huh? just because um, your sister, your spiritual uh, sister took me there, yeah, just to stay for a few days. I had no home then. <laughs> there. And then in the morning I went out, I saw some men, you know, he's all with short, you know, no dressing. He went uh, in front of the, the Buddha, like the Buddha statue is here, yeah? He stand right in front of the Buddha, not inside the, the, the altar place, but outside in the balcony, in front of Buddha, and he do this kind of, I don't know, indecent kind of uh, exercise. He just exercise, of course. It's none of my business, but I was very angry. I go and scold him. I say, you get out. You cannot do this in front of the Buddha. You bad man, bad. You have to respect the Buddha. You can do this, you know, like, like those... Uh, grinding and whining, this kind of... And then with, in a short, you know, I say, if you come to the Buddha temple, you must wear clothes. You cannot do this. <laughs> I scold him so loud. And he say, is it your temple? I say, I don't care whose temple. It's the Buddha's temple. <laughs> and I used a stick. I had a stick to walk at that time. I say, you go before I beat you up. <laughs> kind of nun, you know, not even one meter fifty, got a stick and, and the man is big because he exercise, you know, he's big and muscle. I said, you get out now before I beat you up. And I chase him out of there. Don't come back again, huh? <laughs> very bad tempo. Oh. But I feel this is very disrespectful of him. There's so many places you, you can exercise, huh? You don't go in front of the Buddha altar, no? and, and and then just this and that, with just a, a little short on you or nothing else. No, <laughs> bad temper, must. <laughs> and he was scared of me, believe it or not. <laughs> I'm small, but I was angry. And he can feel it, he can feel my energy. <laughs> so he go away fast. Yeah. I think if one of your sisters here, she, she will <laughs> tell you, is it true? Yeah. And maybe some other thing I forgot. Mm. Some other thing. Mm. Okay. Ah. It was a real temple, a small temple, but there are Buddhas, many Buddhas in there. The altar, and he stand right in front of the main entrance to the altar and just a wee whack himself like that. <sighs> yeah. Hello, Master. Hello. Because I was like, just, just now, preparing a like vegan restaurant, and then, just, recently, there are a lot of pressure, and I'm afraid it won't be good. And then, I hope, just, the master can, uh, give me some encouragement. You do good, you will have the strength of your own to do good things. Okay. 做好事就不用夸，也不用要求了，无条件啊。Next one. Yeah. Hello, Master. My、mm. question is related to yeah, yeah, what Fred was talking about with the abode that you created, this place that you created above the fifth level. Oh, above fifth level. Yeah, and the question is: Are the generations that are also liberated are they going to be able to go to this place? Yeah, if if you sincerely practice. <laughs> okay. And then you can go higher. If not, then you still stay within the fifth level and then go slow later. Mm. And our relatives, mm. our, our generations, our previous generations, are they? Other generation? Yeah. No, the generation, I think they just stay. 
Okay. In the fifth level, that's good enough already. Liberated, but not okay. always have to go all the way with you. Mm? Okay. Thank you, Master. There are different price to pay. <laughs> okay. You practice very hard. Okay, and you earn it. Yeah, and you direct descendant. I mean, disciple. Uh, direct bloodline. They are the the by products of your merit, okay? So if they stay in the five world and liberate it, it's okay already, yeah. When you go up to the fifth level even, or even uh, to my place, yeah, you will not think anymore about relatives and friends. You're completely free from any emotion. If they are there, okay, if they're not there, we are all relatives and friends, okay? Over there, we will not think individual relationship anymore. We are different. We are saints. We are Buddha. Huh? Do you think the Buddha think of his wife when he in Nirvana? <laughs> no. Okay. You feel different. You behave different. It's just natural that you are free from any attachment of anything. Yeah. If your wife or your parents practice with you, then of course they can also come up there. Huh? But if not, they will stay above the three world. Okay? Meaning liberated. Yeah. Forever. Mm. Yeah. But maybe they don't go there immediately to the fourth or the fifth. They have to wait somewhere. But they will go there eventually. But they're not necessarily coming with you. Huh? Because maybe they don't have faith in me. I cannot force them. Hmm? Thank you, Master. Because of your merit and because of master grace, of course, they will be helped, yeah? But I cannot force them to say, oh, you got to believe in me so I can take you to my land, huh? Yeah? Uninvited, yes, has to be willing and lie to come to the host house. If they don't lie, then you cannot force the guests to come even if you like to. Hmm? But you can help because they are your, your friends' relatives, then of course maybe you let them come nearby or something, yeah? Right?